Hue Nair is a small coastal town found five hours east of Ho Chi Minh City, Vietnam. It's a popular destination for backpackers as it's a place where people can go to enjoy long beaches, water sports, eating locally caught seafood and most famously, visit Vietnam's one and only desert. Okay, desert may be a bit of a strong word, but there are some really, really big sand dunes here. Today, I want to explore everything that Muy Nair has to offer, although the weather had some other plans. It's got, the rain's just got harder and harder and harder. Despite the rain, we're going to find out in this video, is Muy Nair worth adding to your Vietnam itinerary? Or, like my old university friend said, are the sand dunes here just a bit shit? It's 5.30am and in true British style, we're going to start this adventure with a rant. I woke up at 4.45 this morning to go to the sand dunes which I thought was 15 minutes away turned out to be 45 minutes away I don't know why I thought it was 15 minutes away but I did oh well that's not the issue the issue is it's raining and I don't have anything waterproof to wear on the bike nothing comes down the front of my face to stop the rain just slamming me in the eyeball I really hope not but this one may be a write-off I'm about halfway to the white sand dune so it's not the end of the world but pray for Ryan this isn't looking good it says it's not raining right now which it is and it's gonna start raining from 11 a.m. all the way until sunset. I was thinking about what to do, whether to carry on or go home and go back to bed and see if the rain stops later, but I'm only here for one day. I don't think I'm gonna be coming back anytime soon. So the sunglasses are going on to protect my eyes from the rain. Let's hit the road again and let's get to the white sand dunes. How much? If you ride by yourself, 700,000 for one cup. <laughs> That's okay. I think I'll walk. Uh, it's a, it's a, yeah. it's something very. It, be my Soviet. If you don't want rain, you can walk. Yeah, yeah. I think I'll walk. It's fine. Yeah. I've, got, I've got lots of time. Thank you. Yeah. I made it to the top. I'm at the top of the sand dunes. And there's no one here because one, it's late, two, it's wet. But it looks amazing, actually. It looks really, really beautiful. I think it would definitely be a lot of fun to rip around here on a quad bike if you've got that in your budget. I think that could be a lot of fun. Or it looks like there's people like up here as well who are renting out these like plastic sheets and you can pay to take one of those and then you can use it to like toboggan down the sand dunes. Again, I'm probably not gonna do that. I don't want to get that sandy today, especially when it's wet. There's a really cool sand dune over there that has like no one on it and no one's been over there. And I think if I could fly the drone in the rain, I would go over there right now. But I think I'm just gonna sit here and enjoy the view for, a, I don't know, maybe 20 minutes, 15, 20 minutes before I head off to the next spot. I need to grab some breakfast and then we're gonna be heading to the ferry stream, to the fisherman village, to the red dunes, and then there's some ruins that I really wanna go see as well. So I'm hoping I can get all of that squeezed in today before I need to go catch my bus at around 2.30 p.m to the lab but yes because of the weather this is going to be a very raw vlog i hope you're looking forward to that probably mainly shot on the gopro today if it stops raining i will get the camera out but i'm not going to risk my gear it's my life so a completely raw vlog it is <laughs> I think if you guys come here and the weather's better for you than it is for me right now, then avoid the Jeep tour. Get the ATV if you have the money. It looks like fun, but if you're a budget backpacker, you're probably not gonna do that. Just walk up to the dunes, walk to the top. Scout out other dunes as well, because there's plenty of other dunes. I think this is the main dune up here where they watch the sunrise, because the sunrise is over there. But yeah, just find your own dune, get your photos, enjoy the view, enjoy the sunrise, check out the lake stuff that I can't do in the rain <laughs> but hey it just means I'll have to come back another time we're not gonna let this rain get the day down we are going to have an action-filled day anyway <laughs> so I've been back at the shelter for a little while now and it's it's just got the rain's just got harder and harder and harder so what I'm gonna do is I'm still gonna give it another 45 minutes or so but I'm gonna see if they have a raincoat because I don't have one hey do you have a uh, raincoat rain jacket I think they do they've gone behind to get something perfect thank you is it free uh, free perfect thank you very much okay 
I've got myself a rain jacket. There's another massive coach load turning up. It's now 8.30, so I think after the sunrise tour, this is when the Vietnamese coach tours turn up. Maybe, I think from my experience, my limited experience, so just be aware of that if you come here. Okay, I waited my time. Uh, it's still raining, there's a bunch of people here. It's really busy now, I wanna go home and take a nap. So, I'm gonna take my free raincoat and head home on the bike and just brave the rain. Actually, I just walked out of the shelter and the rain's calmed down a lot. I mean, it's still raining, but it's calmed down a lot. But I think there's two different places where you can like get the Jeeps and ATVs from. I think I walked back to the wrong one. So it looks like I'm here and I think I parked here and I've gone out from the sand dunes up this way and then come back to here like an idiot. This is the one I want. I recognize the dodgy cobblestone road on the way in. Almost killed my ass. We found her, we're back. My Heineken bike. I've literally just run out of fuel from filling up earlier. Right here, literally right here. You can't ride this stuff. <laughs> At least I only have to push it like four meters. It's about 45 minutes of driving and that a very short 30 minute nap packing and checking out. I'm now back out again. The rain is definitely calmed down a bit but it's still raining and the weather looks very, very unpredictable. So it's just me, the GoPro, the bike, and my poncho. I pulled over on the side of the road at this little Armenian place and I yeah. ordered fried noodles with chicken, but it looks really sad here. I'm riding up and down this main road and there are so many closed shops, shut down businesses. This place obviously hasn't really like recovered yet from COVID. Thank you. Pepsi yeah, Pepsi's fine, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Vietnamese people were lovely as well. But I've scrapped the idea of the red sand dunes today. I just don't want to do sand again, to be honest. I've been home and had a shower. It's a shame that the weather's been so bad here. It just means that I'll have to come back again another time. And next time I'll stay a little bit longer as well. Maybe like three days instead of one day. Okay, so I was on my way to Nguyen Nair and I've just realized that where I'm staying is like 15 minutes outside of uh, the actual town of Nguyen Nair. And I pulled over because I think this is the main town. Look at all those fishing boats, that's crazy. So let's go and get into that fishing village and see what it looks like. So according to my Google Maps, this is, there's an angry man up there. This is the fishing village of Nguyen Air. Although it looks pretty empty to be completely honest, I think maybe I'm a little bit too late. It's almost 12.30 and you know like food, seafood markets and fishing markets are usually like early morning affairs. But I'm going to walk down and we'll have a look. So basically what this fishing village looks like it's supposed to be is a bunch of like homemade tents on the beach with people selling what they've caught that day. That's what I'm going to go ahead and assume is supposed to be going on here. But like I said, I think it's a little bit late in the day so everyone's packed up and gone already there's hundreds and hundreds of these little circular boats and i cannot imagine like all these boats going out at the same time to go fishing how crazy would that look i have to say though it's really sad about all this trash on the beach for the most part vietnam has been pretty clean so just must be maybe because of the sheer amount of people here there's so many like plastic bags and fishing nets such a shame well there you go guys that's the fishing village in Nguyen Nair. If you're going to come, definitely recommend coming earlier in the morning than I have right now. But uh, now I'm going to go to the ferry stream, another popular thing to do here. It's like a, a walk through a canyon or something like that, or some sort of gorge. So uh, let's go do that. So the ferry stream is actually really hidden, so definitely use your maps. And it's on this little river right here that doesn't look very nice here. I hope the bit that you walk in looks better. But there's just a woman sitting in the shop. And you just pull over, pay her 10,000 for entry, which is... Uh, like 30 cents or something like that and then here we go I have no idea what to expect but I think I've got to get in that river I'm not sure I want to get in that I can see people all the way up there so this is definitely the place Maybe it's nicer further up. Okay, it's only really, really, really shallow and it's sandy on the bottom. I thought it was gonna be like stony. I take back what I said, it's not that disgusting. <laughs> 
It's actually very clean by the looks of it. Apart from the weird sandbag things they have going on along the edge. Okay, let's do this. We're walking. Hello. Hello. They got crap stalls. If you want to buy your Vietnamese goodies just next to the river. <laughs> Hello. 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 Oh, wow. Well, now this is pretty cool. This must be where it gets its magical name. So I think those two pillars over there, those are the like the official entrance. And then along the side of this cliff here, these really cool rock formations. How dope do they look? Ah, oh. Oh, okay, there are points where it does get a bit rocky. Make sure you take care because I couldn't see those rocks under the water. I just stood on them and it hurt. I'm probably gonna get bitten alive by mosquitoes doing this. What's up there? This is the thing about Muena, like you have like the popular sand dunes to do, but actually there's sand dunes everywhere. <laughs> so the big white ones I went to this morning oh, are very popular. But actually, there's sand dunes everywhere. They're not quite as big, but there's sand dunes absolutely everywhere. I could see them when I was riding this morning. I hate going up hills. Oh. Oh, I made it to the top and I found absolutely nothing. <laughs> well, that was a weird laugh. Now, do I go back down the way I came or do I go back down this way? Let's have a look over this way, see what it looks like. Okay, we can go down this way. All right, let's tackle it. Whoa. Oh, it's slippery. Good job. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Oh. <laughs> so tired. Yeah, hard to go up. Easy to come down. <laughs> oh, so tired. You and me both, bro. You and me both. So that's where I've just come down from. You might have just seen the guys just go around the corner up there. But it's starting to get beautiful. B-E-A beautiful. I can see why it's called the fairy stream now, because at the beginning it was not the fairy stream. It was like the dumpster stream. Wow, look at these cliffs. Wow. And the size of these plants, look. Big ass plants. So this ferry stream walk is actually really peaceful. I thought it was gonna be a little bit like overrated, but these cliff sides are absolutely stunning. There's nobody here. Once you get past the first 100 meters, it starts to get really, really beautiful. And I think it's definitely worth the 10,000 that you pay to get in. I don't know, what do you think? When you have a look at these cliffs and when you have a look at these trees, let me know. So I've reached a point that's basically just sort of like one foot apart. And it's about, I don't know, 20 centimeters deep. So just bear that in mind if you come here. Maybe don't wear long pants. I actually have no idea how far I need to go. I think I read online or on YouTube or something that it's like a kilometer. I don't know how far I've gone, but it's starting to get very, very skinny if you look this way. So I just keep going. This is a big question on everyone's brain. Shall I end it? Damn, look at these, look. It goes straight down there, like a crevice. If anyone knows what's causing these rock formations, please let me know in the comments. I'd love to know. I think I need to do a river crossing. All right, pray for Ryan. Grenade success. Well, if this isn't the most random coffee shop you would ever see. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it must be about a kilometer downstream. That looks nuts. I'm gonna go up there and get a closer look. Oh. oh, ants everywhere. Oh, fuck, fucking hell. Look at this. Look at that. They look like termite hills, but made out of rock. My gosh, anything that's just a slight incline is hard work for me, but these rocks, man. I honestly can't get over them. I, I didn't know what I was expecting. At the beginning of this, I gotta say I was very underwhelmed, but it's, it's paid off. If you go through the crap bit at the beginning, you get to the good bit. And check out this view. What a place, what a view to end it with. Can't get better than this. Subscribe if you want more Vietnam adventures. I'm trying to hit 2,000 subscribers by the end of the year and I appreciate every single one of you that subscribes and takes time out of your day to watch this British idiot abroad. Peace.